Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers. This is episode 97 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and drag our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My it's name is it's the part of like how proud you are of yourself <laughs> for remembering a number like did 97 right? episodes. In. I know. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, oh, 97. I, I wasn't 97. even sure if I got it right. Uh, my name is Sasha Black, and here with me every week is <laughs> the man who knows numbers, Dan Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> I resent that. You can resent hey, that all you want. Boo. How Hello. are you? It's been so long. Well, hasn't this time? We had yeah. our um patreon q a last night which was a lot of fun we did it was fun i do so mm. love our little chit chats we saw a baby <gasps> oh my god a tiny little human. my ovaries were screaming it was such <laughs> a pretty baby and my That's wife came baby. in and i was like but chloe and she was like no and i was like oh not i don't i like it was fleeting it was fleeting i really don't like i have woken up <laughs> <laughs> Right, so this is this is my argument, and Rianne, <laughs> close your ears because this isn't the part that's nice to hear. When <laughs> one, one thing I realized after having a kid is when you think about having a baby, you think about having a baby, and yeah. everything is like, oh, it's going to be such a cute baby. You can buy like yeah. tiny things. You could do this, yeah. but what you're actually having is a human. Yeah. <laughs> so the, it really freaked me out, and it seems like such a stupid thing to not consider. But it wasn't until he was about two or three years old and he started talking that I was like oh my God, one day he's going to be like 36 yeah. and complaining about taxes. <laughs> I know, I know. Like one day, real soon, my son is going to be taller than me. And that is a very strange concept week, from something that I have pushed out of my vag. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like it's very strange to me that a thing that I have evacuated can be taller Again, than Again, I me. hope this is someone's first episode. But if it is, don't worry. We get to the right and stuff. We promise. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, i don't know if we will today i am fucking on one i don't know what happened i think someone injected me with caffeine in my sleep also i have a raging headache so the only way that i can like try and ignore the headache yeah, is any just correlation by being... between that and caffeine <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> this is why i'm holding a very large cup of coffee That's a really nice mug Oh my God, my sister-in-law. Right. Okay. So for listeners, this is a clear mug um, with a lilac candle and a very purple cork base. Um, And my sister-in-law was in Costa and um, this podcast is not affiliated in any way to Costa. Um, And uh, she was like, oh, look at these. These are really pretty. And I was like, oh my God, they're well pretty. I really want one. And so I uh, sent her some money. And uh, then there was like a a water bottle thing that was also really purple. And uh, then apparently Chloe also sent her money. So she sent me a massive parcel with two Costa mugs that are purple and a water bottle that's purple. So it was delightful to get that this week lush that's the end of my story yeah. okay how's your week been <laughs> we haven't even started the episode <laughs> we haven't um my week's been good i have done things things have happened stuff is going um i don't know i don't know what my week is i finished uh dictating one of the books which is one of my quarter challenges which is good um and yeah I've, i don't know like I, i'm i spent a lot of yesterday trying to do sort of big planning and just because I'm, I'm putting a few <laughs> i'm being really sort of um vague not very that's, very vague that's with not it. that's not common at all it's in this podcast highly unusual highly um, unusual but no I'm, I'm i'm setting a few things up <clears throat> just for like bonuses for the activated authors guys and some extra stuff um obviously the podcast um is going to be launching soon i think i mentioned last week it's gonna be the seventh but we're actually gonna do it on the 14th now um on the day of love because i love podcasting um and so that we go actually live. are you actually did you actually just do that not because of Valentine's Day, but yeah, just to like, because I'm batching episodes, I want to make sure that like it's ahead when we start. So the 14th is, is when that is going to live. Although, as I said last week, it is on people's feeds if they want to subscribe. Um, and yeah, I've done a lot of, um, I'm doing some stuff with the Hawk and Cleaver guys and the Other Stories podcast is um, one of my 
focuses for this year um doing some stuff with them so i've been doing some work on that and yeah like i don't it's it's a weird one i've done a lot of um <laughs> never a weird week <laughs> weird week available at Redbubble. um <laughs> yeah yeah i think it has been it has been a weird week i just i don't know what's happened this week that's that's all i've got that's all i've got I literally said that on my own podcast this morning. I was like, I don't know what's happened this morning. This morning, this I have week. no idea. Yeah, I, no I don't. Idea. I don't. I've just done stuff and things. Actually, uh, for for viewers, I can show you. This is. Oh, I'm like hemorrhaging bits of post its. I. The, I. Oh, oh. oh my god! Literally, <laughs> your notebook just had a post it baby. I literally, my notebook had a post it baby. Um. Anyway, so I have like this giant table where I've been reformatting the backs of loads of my books and doing like um metadata and keyword changes and category changes. And uh, the ever amazing Becca has been loading them all up for me. It's probably taken a fucking hours to do it. Um. And uh. Yeah. So I've been doing all of that, and I'm trying to get like uh, all of the different. Uh, versions in as well so like large prints uh, like I'm just waiting for covers and stuff um and yeah just doing like all of that stuff so that's one of the things I've been doing I've been working on tray um and I am halfway through that it should be going to the editor by the middle of the month at the very 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 latest um mm-hmm. and then I am oh, nice. <laughs> move on um so yeah I, it's, it's I am so confused week. now I'm literally like trying to think of what I've done this week I know one thing I did do is rebuild an entire website so that didn't happened. you build furniture as well uh I that was on Friday last week which would have been after our last podcast episode yes so, yes you've I done built. that this week so I've got the shelf behind me and then I've got like a unit that matches that which is good because I did just have cardboard boxes under my tv because I hadn't yet bought furniture um oh I've also had so I'll, I'll share this on the podcast just because this is quite a big part of um, a journey that I'm going through. I had a blood test on Wednesday. I also had my COVID booster on Wednesday, which explains some of the brain fog. Um, but uh, yeah, because my like fingers are starting to hurt again. So I'm currently undergoing tests to find out whether or not that is just repetitive strain or whether it's a form of earlier onset arthritis, which is a fun thing to be going through. So I am remaining optimistic. We'll see what happens. But I've had my blood test sent, sent off and I should know the next couple of weeks as to what's going on with that but it's is at the that, point where I just your hashtag positivity number four maybe but like it, I, it's also because like there's no point worrying about it until the results come back do you know what I mean yeah what I want all I want is sort of practical moves to go forward so you know if it's yeah. arthritis what do we do about that but if it is repetitive I, strain, I, yeah I think arthritis. it's far more likely that it's going to be repetitive strain oh I do yeah. But any attempt so far, and this I don't I don't know if this is exclusive to British um, NHS, but so far I've had I've been in touch with the doctor several times just to explain what's happening to try and find out like exercises or anything that could help, and I've been sent a pamphlet with some like finger flexing exercises, and that's literally the extent of what I've had. So wow. I'm the the doctor I'm speaking to at the minute seems a lot more um, proactive. So fingers crossed, you know if fingers I, crossed, fingers crossed if I can. <laughs> Um, (laughs) um, but potentially uh, I don't know if it is RSI it'll be a physio situation but we will see well I have got my fingers crossed that it is RSI I think oh yeah I have like bendy things like I can move them and everything it just every now and then it flares up and it's painful well yeah I really hope it isn't uh, early onset arthritis I can't imagine it is I mean like the biggest hint would be like the fact that you've I don't know written fucking 500 books in the last two years that might have something to do with it possibly yeah. um I mean if need be I can turn into one of those you know those birds that like drink the water that just like flop down I can just type like that <laughs> <laughs> oh my god everybody has to come and watch the YouTube just to watch what Dallas just done I've just written the word and <laughs> yeah <laughs> this might take a while <laughs> um okay level up do we have a level up level up we do have a level up uh i was so organized where's the notes our level up this week comes from uh, one of our wonderful patrons cassie newell who says january is kicking off great my final book in my trilogy is done finished Yay. and ready to go i can't believe it also i delivered on my first paid client for coaching and they are rebooking which is huge that that's is oh, huge. that's the best sign to know that like you're doing something right yeah um and another income stream is presenting itself to things are happening let's go 2022 Awesome. 
Patreon. Congratulations. Uh, Big drone. So last week's question, which was um, episode 96, what were your three fave fiction and three fave nonfiction of 2021 and why? Arabelle says in the nonfiction category was 13 Steps to Evil and the Anatomy of Prose by Sasha, because I've never learned so much whilst cackling so hard from books. Um, It says 5,000 Words Per Hour by Chris Fox, because he started me off with sprints just before Nano. That is a very useful book. Um, Fiction, Tech Mage by Chris Fox, because it's mages and spaceships and galactic dragons. A Storm of Swords by George R.R. R. Martin, because I love A Song of Ice and Fire and The Law. And The Past We Hide From by Meg Jolly, because I love D.I. Ward and really related to him. Mm. And then we have uh, S.W. Miller says, top three fiction have to be A Layer of Bones by Helen Schreira, Moon Over Soho by Ben Aronovich, and The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And the top three nonfiction, Eight Steps to Side Characters by Sasha Black, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and the self-publishing blueprint by Daniel Wilcox. Very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, and then Edwin says nonfiction was The Heroine's Journey by Gail Carragher. Oh, that was so good. Wide for the Wind by Mark Leslie Lefebvre. The Relaxed Author by Joanna Penn and Mark Lefebvre. And then fiction was Opportunity by Alice Dare C. Shaw. Raider, The Secret War by Simon Haynes. And Derelict by L.J. Cohn. Some good love recommendations it. there. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's love nice it. to see like familiar faces in that list as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Notices. Do you have a? Oh wait, no. Sorry, Patreon. We just did Patreon. Oh, we no, have no new we patrons. Just did, we oh, didn't we just do comments? We did comments. I yeah, I got very confused. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I even told you to do comments either, did I? <laughs> so, patron. The thing that I've enjoyed this week is. <laughs> <laughs> Next level brain fog right there. Uh, <laughs> we're in February. We're in fucking February, Sasha. We're at nearly 100 episodes. We're, we're nearly 100 episodes. Useless. We are 35 days into 2022. <laughs> Neither of us have a fucking clue what's going on. Welcome to the Next Level Authors Podcast. People listen to this and they want advice and they want to see what the next level looks like. The next level is chaos, folks. Don't. <laughs> oh, 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 my belly hurts. Oh, oh, the next level is that game where you put your like head on the top of a broom and you just spin round and then try and run at your goal. Oh my god, I used to do that at uni. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm 90% sure. Uh, Let me have a double, triple check just in case. Oh, <laughs> uh, so rubbish. No new patrons, but for anyone that does want to get more from the show, uh, including getting the episodes early, joining us for our patron live monthly Q&As, um, in which, I, well, I won't, I won't say much on that yet just because we're, we're still in discussion, but... Um, yeah, and also because we're going to be doing episode 100 live in a few weeks, you'll be able yeah. to join us there live on the Zoom and get involved in that. So if you want to become a patron, now is your time. Awesome. Notices. <laughs> Do you have any? Uh, the Activated Authors podcast will be launching on the 14th of February. So keep your ears peeled out for that. My first guest is the incredibly motivating and inspirational Jonathan Yanez, who is a sci-fi writer who is making a killing on audiobooks, on his fiction, and has recently kickstarted his own first feature film that he's been sharing, lately been sharing the pictures of being out on set and how all that filming is going. And I'm very excited to see where that goes. So join that one. Awesome. Also, sorry, also just very quickly, for those who want to watch it on YouTube, it was recorded at the time I had my beard. So <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> I'm so glad you don't have that beard anymore. Me too. Um, <clears throat> I have a notice for once. Um, I am having a 50% off sale on my audiobook if you buy direct. So if you use the code FAB50 on my website, you can get the audiobook for less than an audio full audible credit. <sighs> oh, and, yeah. yeah. So I will put the links in the show notes along with the code. For that yes please i'll get that okay so we've done comments already so it's the question of the week so this week what's I the decided, thing you've enjoyed this week oh shit 
Um, okay, so it's almost like I'm not running the show. Dad, what's the thing you've enjoyed this week? <laughs> Uh, I have two things. So I read um, Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield, which I'm pretty sure I, I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure that it's a copy that you lent me. Yes, I couldn't find my copy. I'm pretty sure it is. Because the corners are folded and it upset me greatly. No, maybe it's not then. Is it, is it sticky tabbed and underlined? No. Huh. I have an idea, another idea who this might be. It doesn't say in the front. Maybe it's mine forever now. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> I'll check later and let you know. Turning Broke by Stephen Pressfield. And um, people who listen to the show a lot know that I'm a big fan of um, The War of Art as a book, especially when you just need to kick up the arse and you want to get out of sort of a funk of resistance. Um, the War of Art is fantastic. But I've not gotten around to Turning Pro. And the thing I like about this is like, it is a very quick read. It only took me like a day or two to get through because it's like 120 pages and like many of them are just short little chunks. But it resonated so hard because it talks about the journey of Turning Pro. And it's a lot of what we talk about on the show, which is kind of like how other people don't see what this kind of life is like. And it really mm. validates and gives you sort of cause to go forward on living a creative life that isn't sort of your, your stereotypical nine to five. And also what hit quite hard in there was there was a part about um, how your friendship circles change, which I've certainly found with my own over, over the last couple of years, where you find that the people who don't understand the journey that you're going on very much try and pull you back. Um, and it kind of talks about finding new friends and all that kind of stuff. And like the, the whole game shifted for me really when I found Hawk and Cleaver and found other people that were like dedicated to the art and like understood what it meant just to be driven and fueled by that passion and unable to turn it off. Mm. Cause I've said a few times, um, I don't know if I've said it on the podcast, but to you a few times, like there's always like a tiny voice at the back of my head that goes, Oh, a salary job would be easier. And I could just go back to like the nine to five. But I also know, cause I've done it before where I've gone into um, freelance and then back into the nine to five, it doesn't stop you doing the extra stuff. No, I don't think it is easier either. No. I don't, because no. like for me, mentally, it's much harder. Like maybe I'd work less hours, but it's much harder mentally for me to be in a day job. Yeah, <clears> I wouldn't <throat> work less hours. I'd work more. For somebody else? No. You'd work more hours for somebody else? No, not for them. Like I'd end up doing that and then also doing this. So I'd end oh, up no. working. Yeah, but yeah. that's Yeah. yeah. Um, so Turning Pro, Stephen Pressfield. And also um, I watched Tick, Tick, Boom, which is the Lin-Manuel Miranda um, film all about Jonathan Larson, who was the writer of Rent, um, who unfortunately, after like striving for years to make his shows hit Broadway, died the day before it aired. And Tick, Tick, Boom, uh, it's Andrew Garfield singing and it's fantastic. It's got Vanessa Hudgens in it. And it's again, it, <laughs> it seems to be very, very timely, but the, the film itself isn't so much about the creation of rent and all that kind of stuff it's more about Jonathan Larson trying to fight through the struggles of what it is to be an artist in New York so again a lot of that like resonates very hard in sort of just how being an artist is rarely about the end product it's about just the process and just constant creation until yeah. like you die <laughs> <laughs> wow that got morbid fast <laughs> it's true it's true um so the thing that I have enjoyed is a um Surprise savings scheme that I didn't anticipate. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, I told patrons last night, basically uh, one of my uh, distributors, I hadn't noticed that the royalties weren't coming into my bank. And uh, basically what happened is I changed bank account, business bank account. And actually, funnily enough, I'm about to change business bank account again. But um I changed business bank account and uh, it didn't quite capture all the information. Mm -hmm. So the last time I got paid was December 2019. And mm. so now I have two years worth of royalties <laughs> coming to me this month, which is quite nice. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's enough money to go and buy a pair of Valentinos for my birthday. <laughs> yeah. which is very, um, very administrative question how are you handling that with reporting on income is that are you just taking that chunk and putting it in this month or yeah so that will like just go into this month that? no because okay. the way my accountancy uh <clears throat> zero software works is it tracks transactions in in my bank account mm -hmm. so <clears throat> because those transactions never came in it's never accounted for them yeah 
So on my spreadsheet, I knew that I should have had that money come in, but I don't, because there are currency conversions and things, my spreadsheet's always out. So <clears throat> I just didn't notice. Um, and I usually go by what is coming into my bank account. So that will go, just get attributed to sales this month. Gotcha. So it will look like I've earned a bit more than I have. Nice. Um, yes. So that was very enjoyable to know that. So I'm just going to pull the money out and put it into a birthday pot because I think I'm going to go to, for my birthday, I'm going to go to like um, Selfridges or have ha Harrods. And he said Halfords then, Harrods. And, uh, <laughs> get some tyres. Get some tyres, yeah. Pop, pop my tyre. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to go to Selfridges and how Harrods, Harrods. We did it again then. Um, and uh, probably the uh, top shop in Oxford Street where you can get a personal shopper to like dress you because uh, I have no style or sense of style. So I'm probably going to do that for my birthday, I think. So that'd be nice. Nice. And then go to like a vegan restaurant and like... you're a Sagittarius, aren't you? Things. You are a funny fucker. I swear to God, you are a Pisces and I'm not going there on this fucking conversation. <laughs> I've decided you're a Pisces and that's the end of it. You're born in March. What's wrong with you? Of course you're a Pisces. Anyway... <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> question of the week this week we've decided to take one of our lovely patrons questions so um i am choosing cassie m newell's uh question so her question is well her question is four questions three questions but it's one question all wrapped up together that's cheating i know how do you <laughs> approach someone for collaboration projects is there a method or a project outline you use? For example, how did you two come together for NLA and develop this podcast, pardon me, and community? So, I mean, I, I have to start by saying a great place to start is Collaboration for Authors by Daniel Wilcox. Fantastic book I've heard. Um, uh, that's all right. It goes for a lot of this. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, because I've actually um, had this with someone recently as well, one of um, my clients, but... I mean, the best way for a collaboration to form, in my opinion, is somewhat organically, if it can. Um, I mean, how me and Sasha got into doing this podcasting jam together was we got introduced by a mutual friend. Um, and we've told this story where we were literally just thrown into a Facebook messenger chain and then they left. Just left me and Sasha talking because you were just you were getting started with the Rebel Author podcast. And um, yeah. you had a couple of questions on sort of how to put that out on things and we we just got chatting organically it was just friendly we ended up doing sort of writing sprints and holding each other to account with another writer friend of ours um and then like i'd have to go back to the original messages but i'm pretty sure we just kind of threw it out there that it would be quite fun to do something like this so we decided just to have i think it was you that threw it out there probably sounds like me yeah um we had we decided to go onto a call and just have a chat. And within 20 minutes, the next level author podcast <laughs> was formed um, with the Hawk and Cleaver guys and the other stories podcasts. That was um, a bit different. I was, I just reached out to a fellow author and who I, whose work I liked and got chatting with them. And they said they were involved in Hawk and Cleaver. And I kind of got pulled into that. And then after a chat with those guys, we started working on, the other stories together um but i think the best place to start is because you're going to have an idea for what you want that collaboration to be in your head but obviously for a collaboration to work it has to be viable for both parties and it has to be in a way that it just works like time-wise project-wise goal-wise financially wise like all the different factors so my suggestion is work out what it is exactly that you want to propose what you want to collaborate on so you know if we just use a book as um, a template here you kind of come to the table knowing what you would prefer and I use the word prefer not want prefer as a genre prefer in terms of sort of length where you kind of see it fitting um, you know what your budget is to make that project happen um, you have to obviously make allowances for someone else's writing style if it's a book and work out how you want to do that so know where your strengths are if you're a person who is great at first drafts but you hate editing that's something to be aware of to bring to the table and then you you 
you broach it, you get into a conversation and say, look, here's a thing that I'm considering. I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, one fundamental thing that I always add to any message when I reach out for a collaboration is like, no is fine because the worst thing you can do is put pressure on someone. Because if you start saying like, I want this to happen without any viable moment for them to step back without repercussion, that's a really difficult spot to put someone in. And you're more likely that that's just not going to happen in the first place. Um, a very, very big thing to consider and to be aware of is be honest, absolutely honest about like every part of what you can and can't contribute because it's well and good approaching someone who, for example, maybe they're a few steps ahead of you in the publishing process. Um, and like, you know what you'd gain from that relationship and you're really excited to work with that someone. And so you say, it's fine, I can contribute, I don't know, X thousand words per week. And if you can't, then that's going to come up when you work together. When you work together in a collaboration, there really is nowhere to hide. So if you're not honest up front, it's just going to sour the relationship further on down the road. You mean like how fucking completely useless we are at organisation each and every week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We accept, we accept that though, it works. Um, but that's why like, so when I started writing collaboration for authors, I planned for it to be sort of in stages of like before the collaboration, during the collaboration, like where to go after. And as I was writing the beginning parts of before you've actually made any kind of agreement um, that just grew and grew and grew because I realized how fundamentally important it is before anyone says yes and commits to just get everything out on the table because most collaborations will fail because they haven't had enough discussions up front, honest discussions about what's going on. So I'll use an example of um, an author who I reached out to, or it was kind of both um, a couple of years ago, who were talking about doing some form of longer form podcast. And they approached me and said, like, I've got some ideas for this. Like, I'd love to talk to you about it. And I went, okay, like, give me the broad strokes. We'll jump onto a call and we'll go through and discuss it. And on that call, they they said what it was they wanted. And it didn't fit with what I wanted to do or kind of where I was heading. And it would just be extra work for me that wasn't really aligned with my goals. And so I suggested some tweaks that would make it a bit more, you know, so it would work for both of us. Um, which didn't then work for them. And so we very, very kindly said, right, this isn't going to work. And we, we parted ways. We're still friends to this day. Like we still talk. Um, but it really is about getting it right up front. If you can create some form of agreement on paper, and I highly recommend you do, even if it is amicable, even if it feels like such a small thing, me and Sasha have an agreement for this podcast, just, you know, so it's down on paper so that we know if anything does go wrong, who gets what, how it works, how we sort of dissolve everything. Um, and it doesn't, like, I, th I think agreements and contracts and things can be very, very scary, but I do generally just see them as, like, it is a backup. It's a fail-safe. Like, obviously, when you go into a collaboration, you go in with the best of intentions that things are going to be okay and that it's going to work and that, you know, a good thing's going to come of it. Um, in the back of the book, I do have an essay from a fellow author where things went terribly wrong for them. And they were very kind enough to donate that story just so you can see a bit of um, uh, what's the word, like a cautionary tale about, you know, if you don't approach it properly. So all of this to say, it depends how deep the collaboration is, how you want it to work. But fundamentally, know or have an idea of what you would prefer when you approach whoever you're approaching about your collaboration. Be 100% honest. Give them an out, because even if you're super excited to work with that person, it doesn't have to happen. Um, put an agreement down on paper if you can and just talk it out. Yeah, I think that is absolutely solid advice. It's almost like you've done a couple of collaborations before. <laughs> I've, done, yeah. I've done dozens of collaborations at this point, like podcasts, short stories, uh, novels, like the whole shebang. And every one of them, like, I, I think I've, I've, said, I've said a few times, like, I feel like lucky with the collaborations that I've been in, but at the end of the day, it's because I've taken this approach and it's because it's always been a case of when you get into a collaboration, you just have to take your ego out of it. It can't be, I want this book to happen. I want it to be this way because that's where the problem, well, a lot of the problems arise. Mm. When you are in a collaboration, you have to accept that it's no longer a you thing. It's a product of your two voices, no matter how big or small your contributions are. Um, and I think, a lot of people forget that they think, oh, I'll be able to write quicker or produce quicker in the stuff that is mine. And again, it depends on the type of collaboration. If that's what you set up, then great. But nine times out of 10, it's it becomes an amalgam of voices. So me and Luke, 
when we did our, our novels together, we wrote uh, a novel each and first drafted, and then we swapped and we edited each other's work, and then we swapped and we edited each other's work. So we both had a hand in creating something. Um, I've done some where I've just straight up written the first draft and then handed it off to another writer, and then they've sorted it out. Um, I've written short stories in which we kind of went backwards and forwards. Like the ideas phase was always the really collaborative part. And then one person would generally take the lead on the writing and the others would jump into the editing. But yeah, it's, um, it, it, it can be a minefield, but as I say, just come to it with no expectations, know what you prefer, ask. And if they can't give you what you want and if you can't give them what they want, then step back and find someone else. Yeah, I think I don't think I've got anything to add, really, because I am not an expert in collaboration. I don't really do collaborations very often, um, which is why I'm so honoured to be on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, but this is an interesting thing. It, it's not that I wouldn't do collaborations. It's that it's got to be the right thing. And it's I don't know. I just yeah, it's got to be the right thing, I think, um, <clears throat> at the right time. Yeah, I think the reason that this works, like we've said this before, is that, you know... We both needed it at that time, I think. Yeah, and it's also a messier point in the week for us. Yeah. When we're so, like, on it and on it and burning and burning and burning, and then to get to a Friday and just be like, oh, we can be a bit disorganised. Like, we, we we started this podcast, and people who listen to episode one were here Sasha telling me off for overrunning in one of our segments. Like, it was very strict. <laughs> it was and very over time, strict. over time, it's organically grown into what it now is, and... Which you know, is a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, but it's a clusterfuck we both need. Yeah, it is light relief for both of us, I think. Mm. Um, the, the one thing that I was going to add, because I think, you know, you nailed everything. It's, it's almost like you could write a book on collaboration. <laughs> um, the only thing that I would add is just to think about how, like, because you talked about, you, you said, like, just ask, but maybe didn't talk about, like, how one asks. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it, like, you know, it's almost like you're pitching depending on who it is that you're asking. So like if you were to ask somebody who you already know, um, then you can be a lot more informal um, in how, you know, just throw it out there, just chuck it in a DM or an email or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then if it's somebody who you don't know as well, then I would approach it more like writing a pitch email. And then one yeah. of the helpful things that I would, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There's a good example a formula in Dan's in book. The book. If, yeah. if they're if yeah so one of the other things that I think might be helpful is to talk about the project to somebody who doesn't know anything about the project yeah. and then write down the questions that they would ask them that they would ask you so that you almost have like an FAQ of like answers that, that you've thought about before you go and pitch I think that is something that would be helpful yeah um, <clears throat> and you have to you can't just approach it and say I want you to work with me like yeah. you have to and uh, you can obviously say like what you think they would you have to do it both ways so you have to say what you're going to contribute or why you think like you're a good fit and at the same time you have to say like why you're approaching that person like don't just cold call put someone someone and go I really want to work with you like you sell a lot of books can I work with you like what is it specifically that they're going to get out of it because again it has to it has to benefit both people otherwise what's the point of being in a collaboration mm -hmm. So make it try and get try and understand what it is you bring to the table and try and think specifically what is it that you like about them yeah that will make them want to do the collaboration and also maybe in that initial email or initial contact an estimation of the amount of time you're expecting from them because mm -hmm. I make most of my judgments based on the amount of time it's going to take me yeah um, especially at this point yeah especially at this point in my life um. Yeah. I think I don't like I feel very um what's the word unknowledgeable on this topic because <laughs> I just Good thing you pick the question <laughs> <laughs> well that's one of the reasons I picked the question because I just don't bloody know I'm just going to go yeah. back and re-look re at the wording of the question yeah. yeah how do you approach someone for collaboration projects is there a method or project outline you use for example how did you two come together for NLA we came together in the same kind of way that this podcast runs <laughs> in a bit of chaos so um yeah, yeah. And just I before know, a pandemic slammed us in the face <laughs> yeah <laughs> literally it was like what less than a month in yeah i think it was like what january or february in 2020 no, no. 
I don't think it was that early. Well, we launched in April. We recorded the first one in March, maybe beginning of March. Not even the beginning, I don't think. Anyway, it's not. It's, it was very close anyway. to it. Anyway, yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. So I don't think yeah. I have a huge amount to contribute. If I'm perfectly honest, I'm trying to think what other collaborations I have. I mean, I do collaborations like I do lives and things with mm-hmm. people, or I'll do like a podcast. Like even just interviewing people is a is a is a is a collaboration in a way. Yeah. And you know, I I expect a certain number of rejections from like pitching people and stuff and I'm completely okay with that um you know but yeah I think yeah, I'm, go on I was gonna say a few things to um consider as well so I, like there isn't a specific formula because you know it's dependent no. on the collaboration that you're working on but you know if it is creation of a product it is worth thinking about how you'd want to separate like royalties IP rights you know who covers what what happens when when things do go wrong what happens um, when somebody dies because ip yes. rights last for 70 years after your death yeah um also you know if there are particular tools that you use that you know are going to be a central part of the process like say if it's a design thing and you use exclusively photoshop and you want someone else to get involved in design and they don't use photoshop that's going to be a friction point so just come armed with how you work and you know examples and um suggestions for different ways that it could work and as i say just everything that you can that you think of every part of that process just lay it down on the table um work it out talk about it like every every collaboration i've had has had a conversation just over zoom or you know in person where it's just been here's what i'm thinking feel free to say no and then they will ask questions i'll ask questions you know I have something to add to that, though. If you do jump on a call, never ask somebody to make the decision on the call. Oh, no. Take time. Yeah. Let them get off the call and then give you the decision because I hate having to react on a Zoom. I hate having to deal with anything like that. I don't mind receiving like, yeah, I just I, I my intellect is screaming at that like and my yeah I don't know I just I would not want to be yeah. put in that situation at all so well, I've had it before where I've had a call about um and it might even be one of the novels I'm working on at the minute and we said on the call we came up with all the ideas like had the conversation about how how it would work and at the end of it they were like I'm in and I went you say that take seven days like by all means I I'm probably going to take you on face value, but do step away and have a think about it because I, as you say, sometimes, sometimes it can paralyze people who need that thinking time. Yeah. Other times you can be so excited by what you're talking about that you don't actually think of the um, practicalities of the rest of your week and your time and how it would, would really work. So sometimes you do just need that calling off time. I have learned that lesson this past week. Um, somebody <sighs> has given us a very generous gift and I can accept it for like three days because it was so generous and uh, I didn't realize how long my processing time was. And it literally, it was only on the third day that I sort of said to Chloe, okay, I'm in. Um, and uh, yeah, so that has sort of really come to the fore for me this week. Like I've really realized that I actually do require some processing time in mm-hmm. a way, because Chloe's res- immediate response was yes. And I was like, I literally turned in my chair to look at her and be like, bitch we can't we can't respond that fast like how are you mm-hmm. responding that fast like I don't know um so yeah like it's yeah it's interesting I I am one of those people that requires post processing time yeah I'm not but I should be <laughs> do I do that's this your, yes act, and then three weeks that's later your I'm activator like, though yeah. and I have gone through a lot of learning because my activator used to get me in so many problems and trouble mm-hmm. that's where I was a year ago and that's why I have, have had to spend eight months closing down projects and tabs oh, same. and I now like my coach was like you have to put in a 24 hour n- no decision li- like uh, barrier like what is it I don't know anyway block. block yeah no decision and now actually it's longer because I've realized I have other strengths that actually really enjoy thinking about mm. whether or not we're going to well, make is, that decision and this is something that um I realized but then you really when you realize something and then you learn something 
Mm. So like you really like you you know the idea of it, but you don't actually like learn the lesson. Yeah. But, um, I remember my old day job. Uh, someone once saying to me like, just because someone would like a meeting with you, it doesn't have to be in the next three days. Yeah. yeah. Like if you're busy <laughs> and you don't have time, like push it out. That's okay. And I've learned that recently where, you know, people ask for certain <clears throat> like time blocks and things. And I've had to start going, okay, but it's going to be like five, six weeks. Mm-hmm. I just, mm-hmm. like, even with um, meeting up with friends because of like how my time structure during the week and everything else, like there are some friends that can in their life just drop things and just do stuff. And that's just not how I'm built at this point. So they're like, well, when can I see you? And I'm like, June. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll put a right date be- in, but June. <laughs> right before this podcast, you asked to shift our recording time, and my yeah. activator went to the calendar. And then I was like, "Hang on a minute, I can't make this decision. This is changing yeah. too much." I, so yeah. I was like, "I'm going to have to do this at a later date." And yeah, like it's funny, isn't it? Because it's it's definitely something that I always used to be like a snap, 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 snap. Yeah, and you now think, like, everything needs to be responded to quickly. Yeah, and yeah. The truth is, it just doesn't. No, it doesn't. And I'm I'm really trying to embody that because it's so much healthier for me and I think that I make better decisions the funny thing is is I don't always change my decision right Mm. so like sometimes it's still the same answer but the answer has more weight because Mm. I am more invested in that answer when I've had time to like think about it which is interesting um we are now not talking at all about the topic well (laughs) I was going to bring that back because I have just one final tip that popped up into my head um as we were talking is one thing to also bear in mind, because I've, again, had this recently with um, one of the collaborations I'm currently in. If you are in a situation where you've committed to a collaboration and then things pop up that then change your circumstances, make sure you bake it into your collaboration that there's allowances for that and that mm-hmm. things can change. And you're and be sure to have those conversations because I've been in collaborations before where people's circumstances change and then they just stop delivering, but they don't talk to you. And for me, I really have no issue if somebody's like, suddenly not invested anymore or if like something's happened that means they can't commit as much time that really doesn't really bother me at all until they stop communicating and they like to try and hide that fact like if you're just up front if you're just honest and like it seems like cliche time old advice but it's so fucking true just be honest about your situation like i've had a it wasn't even a difficult difficult conversation because she's absolutely lovely but a conversation with them a collaborator recently because one of the projects we were working on, I'm going to have to pause while I work on something else. And so I just said like, this is where I am. What do you want to do about this? And they were like, well, that's fine. We'll just pick it up and X date. And you know, it worked. So talk, talk people communication. Okay. Quarter one challenge. Dan will dictate two novels, launch a survey, write three short stories, launch a new podcast. I have dictated a novel. I have been working on the survey, which I'm hoping to go live in March. Um, the podcast launches on the 14th. Well, it's officially launched, but episode wise, it starts rolling from the 14th. Um, and short story wise, I have written one. I've got a story meeting with some people on Sunday about um, essentially a series of short stories. So that'll be wrapped up in there. But I'm, I'm pretty confident on this quarter, I'll be honest. Okay, Sasha will read a minimum of five sapphic books. I've read three. Implement outsourcing, check. Uh, Check off five things on the new business plan. I'm pretty sure Becca has checked off way more than that. Becca alone has checked off five things. Hmm. And my, you can see my spreadsheet, my my tick boxes on there. I've got a shit ton and most of those are now uploaded. So I would say I have probably done that and I'm working very hard to keep going through this spreadsheet so yeah i'd say that that one is done so the one that i haven't done finished is the suffolk reading um and i'm in a reading slump so (laughs) that's gonna be fun (laughs) yeah i'm loving some of the books i'm reading at the minute oh it's because i have to i've got like a pile of four books i have to read and it's Mm -hmm. just too much like i don't want to read four things that i have to read i want to read what i want to read and so i've got myself into a bit of a muddle and i'm just procrastinating avoiding reading anyway that's it for this week so audience question of the week is uh oh shit i've lost this this <laughs> uh how do you approach someone for collaborations and we will see you next week bye 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 hungry for more if you enjoyed this podcast you can hear more of my angelic accent and dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts for more of me check out the activated authors podcast 
for more of me, listen to the Rebel Author Podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. The camera. Put on the show. No, the whole lot came out. Unless it's gin or orgasms, but then probably not. Don't wrap the dead body in duct tape because duct tape leaves marks on the body. And when you use bleach to wipe up the blood, you definitely have to use gloves because you can still leave oil prints. Sorry, I'm on one. I had to pee in a pot this morning.